Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. This week we're looking at panelling, which is a method for covering a cake in sugar paste. There are a few ways you can cover a cake, but you're mostly going to know the draping method where you place your sugar paste over the top in one piece, push it down the sides and then get rid of the pleats. And also the panelling method, which is what I'm going to show you today, where we cover the top first and the sides separately. Some people have their favourite method and some people use both interchangeably. I have recently started to panel all of my cakes much more, which I'll get into in a minute. But it's no secret that cake tiers are just getting taller and taller, which makes the draping method a little more difficult as the height grows. Firstly, your favourite method will depend on the type of sugar paste you like to use. A softer paste works well for panelling, as you can push the seams together and have more success in hiding the joint. Whereas a tougher paste, like Massa, will be a little harder to hide the seam, but that's great for the draping method, as it's super tough and elastic, which doesn't rip as much along the top edge as it might do with a softer paste. So really you can see how the different sugar paste will affect the finish you get in either method. You can see we've got our cake here covered in ganache with nice sharp edges. I have tutorials to get you up to speed on this, which are always linked in the description box. Now my personal go-to sugar paste is one called Couture, which is a tad softer than Massa. When you drape your paste over your cake like this that's got very sharp edges, it will pull your sugar paste a little bit thinner without you realising it, especially if you're using a softer paste and it sometimes will even tear. That means the very top lip of your sugar paste is already slightly thinner than the sugar paste near the bottom where you're getting rid of your pleats. You're then no doubt going to take a smoother to your cake as well to push those sharp edges in on your paste which is also going to thin it out even more. You'll know this because if you get down eye level with your cake you'll see your cake go up and then it will slightly taper in as it gets to that top edge creating a very subtle upside down flower pot sort of shape. Again, this is less of a problem when you're using a tougher paste such as Massa because that won't stretch too much on your top edge. For those of us whose favourite paste is a little bit softer, we have the great choice of panelling to get the edges nice and straight. Firstly, we're going to measure the circumference of our cake so we know how big our rectangle of paste needs to be to fit around the sides. And then you want to measure the height so we know how high our rectangle needs to be. These mats are brilliant because they already have the centimetres marked out on them, so I just need to reference my mat for how high I need to roll my paste and how long I need to roll my paste, which in this instance is a little bit longer than my mat. I'll leave everything I've used linked below. So I'm just going to spritz my cake with water and use a pastry brush to dampen the whole top. I'm then going to roll my piece of sugar paste into a circle big enough to cover the top. This is my couture paste. The key to rolling a round piece is to continuously rotate it on your mat as you roll. You're then going to drape this over the top of the cake like you would usually, but you'll see the sides are nowhere near long enough. This is because we're only covering the top. I'm just going to smooth it on to make sure it's stuck and then I'm taking my scalpel and gently resting it against the side of the ganache as I follow around the edge. Don't worry about getting this perfect, you can always go back in and take anything off that's overhanging. It's always better to cut too little than cut into the ganache and take too much off. Once that's on, I'm going in to dampen the sides with our pastry brush. I'm going to take some kitchen towel just to dab up any excess and dry the board. I'm then taking a smaller brush and just painting that very top edge of the sugar paste with water so when we come to add our sides on it will also stick to that sugar paste disc. Now we're going to roll the paste for the sides. We know we want a long thin rectangle so I'm getting a head start by rolling my sugar paste into a long sausage. I'm then going to start rolling in a bit of height. Don't forget to keep adding icing sugar underneath if you feel it's starting to stick. Just continuously move your paste. If you get any air bubbles like this, which you can often do by kneading your paste a bit too much, you can just pop them with an acupuncture needle. I use acupuncture needles as they are much finer than a pin and it leaves much smaller holes. Once we've got a decent height, we're then going to work on the length. 
Now I know the length I need is longer than my mat, so I'm just rolling as far as I can and then shifting the paste until it gets longer and longer. Once it's large enough, I'm just going to trim straight edges and a straight bottom. I'm then running my rolling pin across the paste. Not rolling it, just more rubbing it across the surface to smooth out any of those harsh roll lines. Now that we have our piece the right size, we want to give it a very light dusting of icing sugar. Trust me, you don't want to skip this step because I've often rolled this all up just to find it's all stuck together a few seconds later. So just a very light dusting before you roll it up into a Swiss roll shape. We're then going to take our roll and stick our first piece on the side. At this point, don't worry about getting that straight edge across the bottom of the cake. We're wanting to work quickly and if that paste overhangs the board, that's absolutely fine. I'd rather have it too long than too short. Then when you get back to the start, you just want to overlap the sugar paste. You'll see it's already starting to mark from where we rolled it up. This is why you need to work quite quickly. But don't worry, we can get rid of those with our smoother. Just use your hands to adhere the paste to the sides of the cake before trimming where those two sugar paste pieces overlap. You want to cut through both layers so you remove that top part and then the piece from the underneath, which means your two edges now slot together. Just push that join together and just use your fingers to pull the paste, smoothing it out to merge it. You certainly don't want to stop for a cup of tea during this process. Just get straight into it until it's all finished. Don't worry too much about the join finish because we're going to be taking a smoother to it later on. Now for this bottom edge that we have the overhang on the board. We're just going to take a smedger, which is one of my favourite tools, and you're going to use that bottom lip to squash the paste down towards the board. You'll see as we get round the paste is now being squashed against the drum. You want to take your scalpel and instead of cutting it directly in that crease, cut it a couple of millimetres away and then remove all that excess. We're then going to go back in for a second time on that much smaller lip, pushing it down towards the drum again. This is going to ensure a much cleaner finish around the bottom without a gap. Once that second lip is all squashed down, you can then go right up against the cake and remove the excess with your scalpel. You should have a nice clean bottom edge. Now I'm going to remove the cake from the turntable as I don't want it to spin too much whilst I apply pressure with my smoothers. If you haven't tried acetate smoothers yet, I highly suggest giving them a try. I find they smooth out far more imperfections than the harder plastic ones, but there is a knack to using them which I'll share later on. Once the sides are smooth, you take your scalpel and again you're resting this on the very top circle of sugar paste and gently taking off that extra paste. It's always better to not cut off too much than digging into that top circle. You'll want a nice fresh new blade for this, it'll make your job much easier. We're removing it from the turntable again and here is your tip for your acrylic smoothers. I currently have a little bit of icing sugar on my hands, so I'm going to wash them and then leave my hands a little bit damp. Not sopping wet, just a little bit damp so it gives us a bit of grip for our smoothers. You'll want one side of your smoother slightly damp for your hands and the other side of your smoother where it's touching the cake with a bit of slippiness like icing sugar. That way your smoothers stay on your hands and slip against the cake. Here I'm placing one smoother on the top and one at the side, creating that sharp edge where they meet. You want to apply a very even pressure to the top and the sides so that corner stays clean. If you press harder with one smoother more than the other, it's going to either push the top edge in or you're going to push the top edge out. You just want an even pressure as you squeeze that top edge and you'll see that join starting to smooth out and merge together. You'll see I have the imperfections from where my main join was down the side of the cake and how easy they are to get rid of with these acetate smoothers. You just want to go around the whole top 
And remember, the softer the paste, the easier that join will disappear. If your sugar paste is a little on the tough side, you'll have to work a lot harder. Now you're not always going to minimize that join into nothing, but it's the lesser of two evils, especially on something like a wedding cake where the tiers are stacked. I would rather have a small join on the top than flower pot shaped tiers all the way up the cake, which you're definitely going to be viewing from the front and you're going to see those sides. Here I've placed a piece of cardboard so that you can see just how straight that edge is all the way up from top to bottom and it doesn't taper in, it just goes straight up to a sharp edge. And once you start stacking these on top of each other, that's when you're going to start noticing those imperfections on the sides. I'm then going to move over to the other side so you can see just how straight that is. It doesn't even taper in the slightest which I know I probably would have got had I draped this piece of paste instead. Now there is no right or wrong way of which method you want to use. Primarily it's down to your sugar paste choices versus which method you find the easiest and also what your finished decoration is going to be. But I hope that helps. I know a lot of you wanted help with the panelling, but this is pretty much how I do all of my cakes now. Leave me a comment below if you found it useful and I'll see you again next week. Bye guys. Thank you.